Hello everyone, I'm Said. Uh, today we are going to have uh, projectile motion. Uh, look at the screen. Projectile motion is very important topic of A levels physics that is 9702 Cambridge Physics AS levels. Uh, if we to, to start from the projectile motion, uh, the, the most important thing is if we have axis like x axis, y axis, if the body is moving in this way, it is called one dimensional motion. If the body is moving in this way, it is called one dimensional motion. If the body is moving in this way, then it is two dimensional motion. It is called 2D means it is moving along x as well as along y so all the two dimensional motions are the projectile motions the two dimensional motions are projectile motion for example if we have a field like this one and a footballer kick a football and the travel or the pro the journey of the football is like this one this is two dimensional motion this is a projectile motion but the most important thing is how many forces are acting during the projectile motion of the body and how we can describe the acceleration. Look at this graph here. If we describe the motion of the body like this one and we have certain velocity here, and this is some angle theta, we divide this velocity into the components. For example, by having this resultant velocity and angle, the horizontal component of the velocity is 10. And the vertical component is say 30. This is just for, for, for the example. And here, this horizontal component is 10 again, because there is no horizontal force acting. It's again 10. Here at the top, the horizontal velocity is 10. 10, 10, and 10. It means the horizontal velocity is constant. When the horizontal velocity is constant, means there is no horizontal acceleration. So we can say that the horizontal acceleration means the acceleration along x-axis is always zero. So we can say that no air resistance involved. But for the vertical motion, the velocity start decreasing. For example, the vertical component initially is 30, then it decreases to maybe 20, and then it decreases to 10, and it is zero at the top and then the direction is reversed it's again 10 and then it's 20 and again it's 30 means the vertical velocity is changing at a constant rate so we can say that the vertical acceleration remains constant that is called g so we have to describe these two things in the future. Uh, it will be very easy if you have a little more concentration on this topic. The projectile will become easier for you. On the next slide. Hello. Uh, after getting some basic understanding of the projectile, we are going to have some more details. Uh, for, for x-axis, if we have to apply all three equations of motion on x-axis, then look at how we can solve it. For example, the first equation is V is equal to U plus AT. Keep this thing in your mind that we are talking about the horizontal motion. This means the motion along x-axis, not the y-axis. And you know that there is no acceleration along x-axis. We can say that. This term becomes zero and V is equal to U. We already know that V is equal to U means the velocity is constant along x-axis. 
uh, for the second equation it was first for the second equation we have s is equal to ut plus half a t square and again the acceleration is zero so we are left with the relation s is equal to ut or you may write it as s is equal to vt because u and v are same and this s is called range of the projectile from third equation again 2as is v square minus u square Acceleration is again 0, so v square is equal to u square, means v is equal to u. So, uh, the only relation which is required is s is equal to ut, this one. Okay. Uh, for y axis. On the next slide, we will solve some past papers questions. Uh, for y-axis, say the projectile is like going to start from this point. The previous diagram is divided into two parts. Say it is uh, 10. The horizontal velocity is 10 and 10. Means again, the horizontal velocity is constant but for the vertical velocity the initial vertical velocity that is u y is equal to zero and uh, then the velocity is maybe 10 and then increases to 20 and so on anyhow if we have the first equation again for y axis now we are talking about the y-axis. V is equal to u plus at means vy is uy plus gt. Uh, for this g, if the body is moving against the gravity, if the body is moving against the gravity, then g is taken to be negative. And if the body is moving towards, then G is taken to be positive. Anyhow, for second, we have S is equal to UT plus half AT square. Here, the initial velocity UY is zero. So this term is zero and we are left with S is equal to half GT square. And this S is called vertical distance. Vertical distance. Or this is also called height. This one. Again, this is the this is the important relation again. So these two relations are important. This one and this one. Now for third equation, third equation 2as is equal to v square minus u square. 2gs, this s is the vertical distance. You may write it as h or s and then v square minus u square. So by using these equations we are able to solve all the questions related with the projectile just keep two three things very important in your mind that there is no air involved while solving the problems of the projectile there is no horizontal motion uh, acceleration there is uh, a constant acceleration along y-axis called g means the body is under its weight only there is no other force acting on it and um, the last note is that uh, the t the time of flight a flight is same whether you solve by s is equal to ut or by you solve s is equal to half gt square this time is same this time is same uh, if you have some 
data given to solve by s is equal to ut and you have some data to solve by s is equal to half gt square in both the relations you can get the same answer because the time of flight is same now now going to start some questions look at this question this 1.25 is actually the vertical distance you may write it as y uh, this 10 is the horizontal distance you may call it X or even S. This is a um, motorcycle uh, stunt rider which is going to jump from this place and going to hit on this place. And uh, what was the speed at the takeoff? Means you have to tell the horizontal speed. Horizontal speed is called UX or you can say it's VX. You have to solve it. So we know the only relation S is equal to UT, UXT. And the UX is required which is equal to S over T. And you note that S, the horizontal distance is 10 because we are talking about the horizontal velocity, but time is not known. So to get the time, we have another relation that is Y is equal to half GT square. This Y is also called H, the vertical distance, which is given it's 1.25 is equal to half 9.81 T square. So the T is this one and by substituting T at this place, you can get the answer of UX. Clear? Another question. We have a short time, just just few more seconds to get for the other question. Uh, this is a question. Uh, just to refresh the concepts. This is a diagram which shows the path of a golf ball. This is a horizontal, uh, this is a projectile motion. And uh, you know that how how uh, the road describes the horizontal and vertical components of the golf ball velocity when the air resistance forces are ignored means there is no air involved means no horizontal force. If there is no horizontal force, there is no horizontal acceleration, means Ax is zero. If Ax is zero, you can say that the horizontal velocities are constant. So option C or D may be one of uh, these two options correct. So for the vertical motion, you know that the vertical motion, the acceleration is always constant. So the acceleration of gravity is actually remains constant during this projectile motion. So we can say that the constant acceleration along vertical uh, looking correct uh, here, the acceleration decreases. No, the acceleration will not decrease along Y axis. So the option C is correct. Thank you very much and good luck.